Hi folks, this is James Sullivan, aka YouTube user Jaime Tude, and this is my Tude Sense. Welcome back to my monthly vlog. Today's topic is not a question I get asked a lot, but it's a topic I'd like to address nonetheless. Today's topic concerns a certain percentage of the autistic population. I just want to make that clear right off the bat. And that is, is there anything that bothers you about the autistic communities? Well, there are a few things. But the one that I want to tackle today is potential. I am a firm believer that whoever you are, whether or not you're autistic, you're given certain obstacles in life. And how you deal with those obstacles defines who you are. So what I don't appreciate is certain higher functioning autistic individuals using their condition as a sort of crutch. This sort of thing happens in a number of different situations. I look at autism as being a sort of obstacle to overcome, or at least work at. So when I see certain people blaming their behavior on Asperger's, PDD, ADD, whatever DD, I'll buy that if they're younger. However, by the time you're in your 20s, you really don't have that as an excuse anymore. By that point, you're pretty much an adult. You've got a pretty solid perspective on who you're going to be in life on your shoulders. So if you get obsessed over something and you say, oh, it's just my autism, that may be technically the case. But when you say, oh, it's because of my autism, you treat it like it's not you. You treat it like it's some sort of parasite attached to your body. This thing is making me behave a little bit different from everybody else. I work very hard to be where I am now in terms of being social. And I can still work on some things. But somehow I have two jobs that I frequent. They're not even part-time, but they're jobs nonetheless, and I enjoy them. And a lot of people who are in my same boat say, I can't find jobs because I'm not normal. When I hear that sort of thing, I'm not blaming the condition. What I'm blaming is the fact that you just haven't been pushed far enough. Now, a lot of people are going to argue against that, and maybe you have a lot of points to bring up, but if you acknowledge that you have trouble with something, the next thing a quote-unquote normal person will do is look for ways to improve themselves. And one step towards doing that is accepting your own behavior as part of who you are. So if you acknowledge that you have trouble getting over certain things, or if you have trouble learning certain things, that just is a sign that you need to work harder at it. I wish I could have been pushed harder in some cases even. It took me until my mid-twenties to get a driver's license. It took me until years getting out of college to finally find some work, but I'm still working at it. And you can too. And that's all I sort of wanted to say on this. Whoever you are, you got problems, you can work towards them. Don't sit back and blame whatever category it is that you're in, technically speaking, as a crutch. Whatever it is, you can break free of that. And that's my two cents. If you have any other questions for me, please leave something in the comments section, and I might just address it the next time. Thank you very much, and God bless you. And now this is the part in the video where I like to give you my toot views. I might want to rethink doing this because it looks like the Three Stooges or something. Within the last month or so, we saw the premiere of Sonic Boom, the TV show on Cartoon Network. Now, I'm a lifetime fan of Sonic the Hedgehog and all the characters in there, but I do consider myself to be a very passive fan, among other things, even though I've been collecting the comic books for years. And I don't own too many of the current systems that pump out the games. So I guess I'll just have to settle for the TV show and the comic. And if people who are watching this who know me personally still think I'm a more aggressive fan, allow me to point your attention to this guy right here. You're welcome for the plug, Dan. So this show is released coinciding with the current game Sonic Boom, and the TV show is supposed to be a sequel follow-up. And now, seeing as it's got three episodes released, I think it's a pretty fair time to start judging it. Well, it's a decent show from where I'm standing, only it's not without its flaws. And there are also a few things that made me raise a brow. See, for months now, both the game and the TV show have been pushed, particularly by Sega, who owns the rights to Sonic the Hedgehog. Looking on the Cartoon Network site, I saw nothing, I repeat, nothing advertising the show, especially in the weeks that came up to its release. Maybe there were advertisements on television and I just didn't see them because I don't really watch too many cartoons on that channel anymore. Come back, late 90s, we miss you. And when I see an advertising scheme like this, I pretty much think that the TV executives aren't really pushing this. They're going to prioritize their homegrown shows, no matter what. So that's my beef with the advertisements. Let's take a look at the show itself. Let's start off with the show's introduction. What do we have here? Ooh, action shot, action shot, action shot. Rainbow! Action shot, boom. 
title. That was quick. It was all over in 30 seconds. Every Sonic show previously had some sort of memorable introduction. This one just seems to be going, Phew. we're spitting it out there. We're just gonna spitball this thing. Not the best idea, because all the promotional material they had for the show had better editing and showed a lot more action. I was expecting to see that sort of thing as the show's intro. That would have been better. And they don't even have room for a proper theme song here. See, even the previous shows, when Sonic was at his worst, they still remembered to have a cool theme song. That's the unwritten rule about pretty much every good television show out there, is to have a cool theme song. Do you think Friends would have been quite as popular without that? I don't think so. I'll be there for you. So if this show makes it to season two, please fix that problem. Problem number two, the title card. This is a case where if you blink, you might miss the episode title. It's only up there for about three seconds and whoa, whoa, what was that? No sound, no music, no time to read anything. When the Saturday Morning Sonic did it, they had a more basic title card, but they had music to go with it that made it sound like it was something fantastic. Every time you had a title card coming on, it was an event. Essentially what I'm seeing here is something that they're probably not putting a lot of high hopes on to have as an ongoing series. It's coinciding with the game release, so it's probably just being used as an advertisement tool. And due to the factors that I mentioned, it may only last one season. However, those are just a bunch of my nitpicks. Going by the episodes themselves, they're actually pretty good. It may not be the sort of thing that it attracts a new audience, but it's something that appeals to folks like myself who have been on the bandwagon for a while. We don't have any beginning episodes that explain who all of these characters are. However, in the first two episodes, they did have little moments in here establishing the relationships that these characters have had and the history that they've had. It's not dwelled on too much, but it's there. I still think they could have done more to introduce them for a first episode. This is either made to just follow up to the game, or it's just saying the old audience is probably the only crowd that's going to watch this. All in all, I did get some chuckles out of it, and I'm glad to see that Sonic's back on television. I'm enjoying some of the stories that they have so far. They have a good balance of comedy and adventure, so even though this show might only last a season, I wish it the best. And if you're someone like myself who's on the bandwagon, give it a watch. I highly recommend. So that's my two views, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao for now. If you like what you saw here, please, please, please try to help support it. I have a Patreon page. You can help me by going over there, throwing some money, whatever amount that you like to throw in. If you're not watching this on YouTube, I also have a YouTube channel. So go there and hit that subscribe button to be notified whenever new videos and new content come out. I'm also on Facebook. Go over there and like that page so you can be notified as well whenever a new episode or video of some sort come out, as well as exclusive behind the scenes content. You can also hit me up on Twitter over there to see what uh, kind of stuff that I like to share. Just be warned though, I don't like getting too many messages. So if you're constantly sending me stuff all the time, I can get really agitated. Remember, my privacy is golden. And if you like my t-shirt, I got a t-shirt store over there too. I got links, I got fresh designs, I got new stuff coming out over there. Provided, of course, that anything actually sells. That's about it. If you like what I do, hit that like button, Facebook me, tweet me, share me on your little social networking sites, do whatever you gotta do. Email me to all your little friends, and that's all I gotta say. Thank you, and peace!